We ensure that each and every one of the over 500 dogs that come to us for training each week is appropriately vaccinated according to their age. It's one of the ways that we make sure that everyone in the building can be safe. But sometimes when you go to the veterinarian for your uh, booster or to get your dog vaccinated, it can seem overwhelming with all of the options that they present to you. In a moment, you're gonna meet Dr. Alex Avery. He's a veterinarian from the Our Pets Health YouTube channel, and I'll post a link uh, to his channel in the description below. But he's gonna help us demystify what all of these vaccines mean, and he's gonna help you make a more informed decision about what vaccinations are appropriate for your dog. I'm Ken Steep, and welcome back to McCann Dogs. Does your dog really need to be vaccinated for everything that your vet is recommending? What about the side effects of vaccination and how often does your dog really need to be vaccinated? Hi, I'm Dr. Alex Avery from the YouTube channel Our Pets Health and I'd like to give a big thanks to Ken and the team at McCann Dogs for inviting me over to talk to you on the topic of vaccination today. We vaccinate our dogs against a number of diseases. A lot are deadly, some are common and some are very rare any vaccination program should consider two things. The first is the local risk of disease, and by local I mean the country or region that you're in, as well as where your dog will actually go. And the second is your dog's lifestyle. And what we can then do is we can split our different vaccines into core vaccines and what I call lifestyle vaccines. So the core vaccines protect against those diseases that are present in the local area, and which, if contracted, have severe health implications, and that includes death. They may or may not be common, um, but vaccination has played a huge role in helping these diseases become more uncommon. Even so, when the consequences are so high, vaccination of all individuals is definitely justified. But what about the side effects of vaccination, you might ask? Well, I'll discuss those in just a minute. Now, the classic disease that most of you will have at least heard of is parvovirus. It survives in the environment for a very long time, and it remains in an area by circulating in the wildlife and the stray dog population. Vaccination is incredibly effective at preventing parvovirus. So where vaccination levels are high, it's actually quite possible that the number of animals who contract parvovirus will be very small. Time and again though, it's been shown that it only takes a small drop in the number of vaccinated dogs for there to be a huge and serious outbreak in the area. Make no mistake, parvovirus is terrible and it's a frequently fatal disease, especially for young puppies. Rabies may be another core vaccine, and if it is in your local area, then there may very well be a legal requirement and legislation uh, making it essential that you vaccinate your dog with a specific regime. Now, as well as killing dogs and other animals, rabies, it is a, human, a huge human health issue, and it will kill anyone not vaccinated or treated immediately. Now, I know this fear firsthand after being bitten by a street dog while volunteering as a vet in India. And although I was vaccinated and I went to the hole in the wall pharmacy to administer a top up vaccine straight away, the next few days were a little bit anxious. Thankfully, the dog never, never developed rabies and I'm obviously fine, but the risk of rabies should not be underestimated and you really need to follow the recommendations and the legislation in rabies vaccinations. So other core vaccines can include a stemper, hepatitis and possibly leptospirosis depending on your area. Your vet will know the local risk and will advise you of which one should definitely be given to your dog. Now onto lifestyle vaccinations. These protect against diseases that are at a higher risk because of the activities or lifestyle your dog lives. They may be quite common and if so then they're often non-fatal. Some lifestyle vaccines though uh, will be against diseases that are quite rare but still have the potential to cause serious and even fatal disease. So the classic example of a lifestyle vaccination in dogs is canine cough or kennel cough. This disease is more of a syndrome in that there are a lot of different bugs that can cause our dogs to cough and be contagious. Some are only very mild and generally don't result in anything more than a slight cough. Others though, specifically a bacteria known as Bordetella bronchoseptica, also possibly though parainfluenza or influenza virus, they're very contagious and can result in a severe cough, a high temperature and a very unwell dog. And that can last for several weeks. If though caught by a puppy, an elderly animal or one who's immunocompromised for whatever reason, then there is the risk of developing pneumonia. And in very rare cases, this could actually be fatal. So 
If your dog is felt to be at a higher risk of catching these diseases because of their lifestyle, then these additional vaccinations are definitely a good idea and something to consider. If they are not at risk though, then they should not be given. It's quite simple. We don't want to give more vaccinations than really needed for each individual. Some risk factors for lifestyle vaccines might be going into kennels or doggy daycare. It might be exercising in busy dog parks or going to shows or competitions um, or having agility classes or behavior classes. It might also be swimming and drinking water from rivers and lakes or visiting areas where ticks are a real threat. It might be just living near livestock. You should really talk to your vet about what is most appropriate for your individual dog. So that's what we should vaccinate against, but how about how often should these vaccines be given to your dog? So our aim is to give them as little as possible while at the same time making sure your dog is always protected from the disease. Vaccination technology is ever improving and our understanding of the body's immune system, which is incredibly complex, is also improving. Both of these points mean that in some cases we're now able to vaccinate our dogs much less frequently than we did before, while at the same time being confident that they will not be compromised in their level of protection from these diseases. Generally speaking, our core dog vaccines are expected to provide at least three years of protection against disease. After this time, our dog's immunity may not remain high enough to protect them against disease. In some dogs though, this immunity will last for five years, for seven years, maybe even for nine years or longer. This means that the general recommendation is often to revaccinate after three years to be certain that every vaccinated dog is protected. An alternative though is to run a blood test and a specific blood test known as a teeter test. And that may be able to tell if your dog is still immune and so it doesn't need its vaccinations to be given at that point in time. Now this in itself is a big complicated topic and it's one that I've already discussed over on my channel if you're interested. The answer is actually often not as clear cut as some people might have you believe. Moving on to our lifestyle vaccines, they're often of a different type to our core vaccines. And this generally means that an annual vaccination is needed. The immunity they stimulate our dog's bodies into producing only lasts for a relatively short period of time compared to our core vaccines. And teeter testing is also unfortunately of little use in determining whether our dog is still protected at a later date. Now, one thing a lot of people worry about is the side effects of vaccination. And unfortunately, the anti-vax movement in people has spilled over into our pets. Believe it or not, vaccination is incredibly safe. There is always a risk of side effects with any medication or health intervention, but the incidence of side effects and significant side effects to vaccination that require treatment, it's absolutely tiny. There is no doubt in my mind that vaccination at an appropriate interval against those diseases for which your dog is at risk and may come across in their life is a vital part of ensuring they remain as healthy as possible. So I hope you found today's video all about vaccination interesting and it maybe answers some questions you might have had about whether your dog needs vaccinating or not. Uh, I'd like to give a big thanks to Ken again and the team at McCann Dogs for inviting me to come and speak to you guys. And if you're interested in more videos about helping your dog and your cat live a healthier, happier life, then be sure to check out my channel, Our Pets Health. But until next time, take care. I can't thank Dr. Alex Avery enough from the Our Pets Health YouTube channel. And if you haven't done so already, check out the link to his channel in the description below. If this is your first time on the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We publish new videos every single week to help you spend some quality time with your four-legged family member. Beside me is a link to the Our Pets Health YouTube channel, so make sure you check it out. On that note, I'm Ken. Have a training.